AMG versions of the Mercedes C-Class have always played second fiddle to the ever-reigning BMW M3. Sure, they had great engines, but dynamically they weren't quite sharp enough. However, the 6.2 litre V8 powered model was a massive step forward, and now was a brand new one. And I reckon it's the one to have over the BMW. Here's why. Gone is the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8. This time we have a 4 litre twin turbo. It's quite a cleverly packaged engine. It's got what's known as a, uh, a hot V. The two turbos are nestling within the V of the engine, and it's pretty much the same thing as you get. In an AMG GT, except this one's got uh, wet sub lubrication as opposed to dry sub, a bit less posh. This is only the entry level C63, it's not the even more bonkers S1, but you still get 469 brake horsepower and it's still maddeningly, ridiculously fast. Probably the best word to use to describe the performance isn't necessarily savage, I would say relentless. Just this almighty surge, and it just keeps on going. It has about the same performance stats as the M3, but I don't know, to me it feels just a bit more urgent, a bit more dramatic, a bit, a bit quicker even. One of the best things about the current M3 is the way it looks. With all its aggressive lumps, bumps and vents, there's no question as to what sort of car it is. The C63 on the other hand, particularly compared to its predecessor, looks incredibly restrained. I wasn't a fan of that to start with, but after spending a bit more time with the car, I like that it's more subtle. If you want to fly under the radar, this is for you. In fact, you could almost call it a sleeper. The trouble is with the BMW M3 is if conditions are anything other than bone dry, the back end just tries to jump out all the time. And that would be fine if it was manageable, but it's not, it snaps. And this doesn't, not only is traction probably a little bit better, it's also less snatchy when the back end does go. The BMW is a little bit like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. He's talking to you one minute happily about Phil Collins, but the next thing you know, you've got an axe in your face. But this C63 AMG is a bit more like the Beast from X-Men. Sure, it's a savage when it wants to be, but the rest of the time it's friendly and you get plenty of warning if it is about to go nuts on you. The M3's cabin is a perfectly acceptable place to spend time in, and the infotainment system is way better than the clunky one in the Merc. But it's a Stuttgart machine that feels like the more premium product, it's full of exquisite little details, fancy materials, and a set of amazingly comfortable seats. As with any car, there are aspects of the C63 that aren't so great. The steering's too light for my liking, and it's not as sharp as the BMW on the turn-in. It'd also be nice if the brake pedal had a bit more feedback to it. But as an overall package, this is the one to have. It's a far more effective and manageable road car than the M3, and I'll let you effortlessly waft the miles on end while happily destroying any bit of tarmac you put in front of it, should you be in the mood. Time to move over, Mr. M3. There's a new king in town. <laughs>